love church. I tell you all that every week. It's good to be right here in this place. Amen. How many of y'all know we serve an on-time God? Come on now. On-time God. If you're visiting with us today, thank you for being our friend. Amen. We appreciate you being right here, being our guest today in this house. And man, I just believe that there is a multitude of things that the Lord desires to do in this house today. But you know what we'll do? You know what we'll do? We are so guilty of doing this. We are so guilty of getting in a hurry to do our thing that we'll just, we'll just walk right out the door and not let him do his thing. You know, because we got, a, we got our own little agenda. You know, we got to get in there, get church, get the praise on, you know, and then, then we're going to get on out of here. Got to be at wherever we're going, you know. But I just believe God's going to do something great in this house today. Sometimes you got to marinate in it. You know what I'm saying? I've said it for years, you know, we, we're, a, we're a microwave generation serving a crock pot God, you know. Just got to. It's got to let him work slow. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it works slow. Sometimes it works slow. Amen? Sometimes you have to let it, let it simmer a while. Amen? Amen. Amen. Woo! God's good. <laughs> you don't ever know around here, do you, what God's going to do? Don't you love a free house, though? Come on now. Don't you love a free house? I love a free house. I love a church that's alive. Church alive is worth the drive. What they tell me. We got folks driving a long way to come to church here. I appreciate you being here. Some folks drive an hour and a half just to get here. Man, thank God. We, we appreciate you so very, very much. Amen. I wouldn't go to a dead church if I was a devil. You know what? I like a, I like a church alive. Come on now. Come on now. Amen. Hey. I said, hey. <laughs> Woo. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Yeah, man. I tell you. Man, I'm excited about this month. We got so much going on this month. And uh, next month, this month's almost over, but next month, we got so much going on, man. You couples, you need to get signed up. Y'all need to get signed up for this uh, date night we're going to have here at the church. And uh, I know it's $30, and some of y'all like <gasps> You know, come on now. You can't go to Chick-fil-A left for under $30 no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about taking your, taking your wife, you know, and bringing her to a date night. Man, we're going to have a great meal. We're going to have a catered meal going to be in here. We're going to have all kinds of things going on, door prizes, things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. Amen? Amen? Got these women's Bible studies. Men by men. Man, where's my men at? Come on now. I think it's February 7th. Is that right? February 7th? 7 o'clock? Man, we're going to start our first of this year men's Bible study. Better man is what we're calling it. Or what, that's what it's called. Better man. We ain't calling it, but that's what it's called. Amen. Praise God. And listen, I think we've already got about 50 men signed up for it, don't we? Amen. Come on. We need 100 of y'all. Come on. You ain't signed up. What you waiting on? What you waiting on? Get signed up. We're going to have a great time in the Word of God. You want to grow, draw closer to God? I hear people say, well, my New Year's resolution is draw closer to God. Get in His Word. Get in His Word. Everything you need is in His Word. You need encouragement, it's in His Word. The Bible says He sent His Word to heal us. Come on now. You need healing, it's in His Word. Anything you need is in His Word. You know, the Word of God has a way to renew your mind by the renewing of the mind. That's the only way you're going to show yourself holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service, according to the Word of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of the mind. The only way you can renew your mind is through the Word of God. It renews our mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles out. Y'all know where we're going, right? Let's go to Luke chapter 15. <laughs> we're going to try it one more time, baby. <laughs> So you've been waiting on it. Chris, well, we've been waiting, you know. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Man, we tried to go here last week, didn't we? Run all our Baptist folks off. I'm just kidding. 
just kidding. Praise God. Luke chapter 15. You know, that's one thing I do love about this house. It's, man, we got people from all denominations sitting in here. You know, people ask me all the time, they say, what denomination is your church? I say, well, it's a non-denom. They say, oh, it's one of them. I'm like, and they'll, they'll keep smiling. I'm like, yeah, it is, you know. <laughs> you know, we got Baptists, we got Methodists. Man, I was, I was raised up in a Methodist church, y'all. Spent 20 years in the Methodist church, then got saved. <laughs> you know, they said it couldn't happen, but I, it did. It did. They said, I'm not kidding you, they said it couldn't happen. They said they don't believe in it, but it did, it happened. Got, got baptized in water, deep. Not sprinkled, amen? In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> Then got filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Woo! That's when I started losing all my Baptist, all my Methodist friends. Anyway, I better hush. I'm gonna get in trouble. God's good. Amen. Oh Lord, help me. God is good. I love this story. This is a story that's preached in so many pulpits every week. I preached it many times myself. But don't you just love it when God gives you fresh revelation about something? Amen. I don't, know who, I don't know who I'm talking to, but in this room right now, there's some people that are here right now. And I tell you, God knows you're here. And maybe you even, maybe you even came here this morning kind of kicking and screaming, you know. Not literally, but inside. You're like, ah, ah you know. And you, you showed up here, you know. And can I tell you something? I believe that there's a divine appointment. And I believe God's going to meet you right where you are. Amen? And here's our belief around here that you're not going to leave with your heart the same. With your marriage the same. Amen? Man, I love it that our, our, our intercessory team, altar team, they've been getting in here early on Wednesday night, getting in here early on Sunday morning, and just, they already gather in a room. It sounds like they're having revival in there gather in the room and then they just they just kind of overflow in here and that's why we kind of keep the doors shut until about 10 after because they're in here man and they're just saturating this place with prayer you know why because they're believing that you're going to have an experience out in the parking lot you're going to have an experience at the front door you're going to have an experience during worship you're going to have an experience during the word you're going to have an experience at this altar that your life is never going to be the same every bit of it that's what it's for that's what it's for so let's go to the Word of God, Luke chapter 15. Very, very infamous verses of Scripture here. Verse 11. In my Bible, this is in red. So that means that Jesus said it. So listen to what Jesus said. He said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. I'm reading from the New King James, by the way. So he divided unto them his living, his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country. And there he wasted his possessions with prodigal or riotous, as King James would say, or crazy living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went, and he joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine, to feed pigs. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, because no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, Mm -hmm. He said, how many of my father's hired hand, hired servants, have bread enough and even to spare, and I perish with hunger? I know what I'll do. I'll arise and I'll go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son, so make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father But when he was still a great way 
off. His father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry, for this is my son. He was dead, and now he's alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the power of your word. Today, Lord, as we break your word, as we break this bread of life, let it speak to us in ways that's never spoke to us before, even from the common stories, God, that are told here. We make sure that you get all the praise. We make sure that you get all the glory. We thank you for it now in the mighty and powerful name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hey, lay your Bible in your lap and give the Lord another hand clap of praise in this house. Come on, you can do the better now. Let's give him the best praise. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, this is a story. And there's obviously something that's going on here. I mean, there's something that's, that's, that's going wrong here, I should say. I mean, because this, this son, uh, this younger son, he has two sons, the older and the younger. And the younger son comes to the dad and he says to the dad, he says, hey, he said, I want my living. I want, in other words, what he's saying is he says, I want my inheritance and I want it now. I want what I want and I want it now. And, uh, and then the surprising thing to me is that the dad gives him what he wants. He gives him what he wants. And so what he's basically saying is, he says, give me what I want, give it to me now, because I know better how to handle it than you do. And, and, and when his dad, when he comes to him, and, and the way I understand it now, and even from some research that I've done, that you get your inheritance after the dad has passed on. And so his dad had laid all of this up, and he had all of this. So, so basically what he's saying is there's something that's going on. There's some tension that's taking place. And so he's saying to his dad, he's saying, look, give me, give me my inheritance now because you're dead to me after this moment right here. And then the Bible says not only that, but the Bible says that he gets all, all of his living. He gets everything up the next day, and he moves. I'm talking about the next day. And he moves to a faraway country. He don't, he don't just move to another state. He moves to a whole other country. Moves to a faraway land. Moves far away from it all. In other words, what he's saying is he's saying, I'm not coming back. Don't, you know, this thing is over right here between you and I. I don't know what's happened. Something pretty severe had happened. This is over between you and I. And I'm, I'm not planning on coming back. I, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get as far away from you as I can. I'm going to move to a faraway country is what, I, what I'm going to do. Yeah, you're not going to be able to check on me. You're not going to be able to, uh, to contact me. It, there's not going to be none of them drive-by checks. Anybody ever done that with your kids? Oh, my goodness. I remember my son. He, <laughs> she knew I was going to say. <laughs> I, I, I remember my son, man, when, when he bought his first house. You know, he was single. And every day I'd drive by. You know, it didn't live far from me, but I'd drive by. Funny thing was that I, we, you know, that was back in the day when the next tails, you remember the next tails where you go beep, beep, you know? And I'd drive by, and every time I'd drive by, my, my next tail, beep, beep. He, I said, yeah. He said, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing? Standing looking out the window every time I come by there? I said, yeah. No, what this, what this son was saying was there's not even going to be any drive-bys. And then the Bible says that the next day he got all together and he moved to a faraway country as far as he could get from them. And the Bible is plain and it's blunt when it says it. It says he went away and he wasted his inheritance. And he wasted his inheritance. You know how he wasted it? He wasted it. King James says riotous living. The Daryl version says cray cray living. Y'all know what cray cray lives. Anybody ever wasted anything in here? You know, I, I talk to people many times and they say, well, pastor, I'll tell you what. If I had all the money back that I'd spent on booze, 
If I had all the money back that I'd spent on smoke, you know, if, I, if I'd had all the money back that I'd just spent on crazy living, I'd be a rich man or I'd be a rich woman. I can't tell you how many times we've been in houses to take food uh, because of a poverty situation. And we go in and there they are. They have no food in the, in the pantries at all. The kids are running around with no shoes on their feet. And so many times, though, the trash can is overflowing with beer cans. The ashtrays are overflowing with cigarette butts. And what we see here is, is, is we, we see this is exactly what the enemy wants for your life. Never, never forget this. Never forget this. And I know I quote this scripture to you every single week. But never forget John 10.10. 10. Put it to memory. Make it, make, it, make it one of your scriptures that you, you put to memory because it can serve you well in a reminder kind of situation. Because the Bible says that, and what, 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 God, what the Lord is saying here is true. He says, I'm, I'm just warning you that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Can I tell y'all something? That's all he's ever come for. He didn't come to be your friend. He didn't come to be your helper. He didn't come to be your counselor. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus is telling us this. But then Jesus also says, he says, but I come, but I've come that you might be, you might have life, watch this, and you might have it more abundantly. In other words, you have life and that you might be blessed in that. Man, I love the blessing of God. Don't you love the blessing of God? I've been talking about the blessing of God a little bit over the past few weeks. And I love the blessing of God. And this is exactly, and I've said this many times before, this is exactly what the Lord wants for our life. I believe with all of my heart that what he wants for our life is he wants us to be blessed. But this right here, what we're seeing, is the perfect picture of how the enemy gains access to our lives and reduces us to a place of poverty. Reduces us to a place of poverty. Can I tell you something? Let me just say this to the young people in this place. You want to make sure, you want to make sure that you got some good godly counsel in your life. Because the Bible says that this young man went and he wasted his, his living. He, he wasted what, what had been put up for him to get his life started. Uh, he, he wasted what had been set aside to be a blessing to him. When his father was gone, he took it and he wasted it. I want to I tell you, it, you better have good godly counsel. Somebody that loves you and somebody that loves the Lord. Can somebody say amen? amen. And, and let me say this to all of the parents in here. You know, you might feel like a lot of times, like, feel, man, I blew it. Just because they don't do exactly what you think they ought to do or things didn't go exactly the way you thought it ought to go doesn't mean you failed. No, let me tell you, let me, let me give you a powerful concept that you can, you can take it and you can, you can put it to memory because it's going to help you sometime. Just, just remember this right here. Always stay the course. Stay the course. See, I, I tell people, people a lot of times they'll say, what, what would, Pastor Darrell, what would you say has been the success of your ministry? There's a, there's a lot of things, and, 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 and the number one success is the Lord's favor, amen? And I'm so thankful for that. But I think the favor came because we stayed the course. I've seen a lot of pastors come. I've seen a lot of pastors go. I've seen a lot of families come, and I've seen a lot of families go. I've seen a lot of things happen through the years. But here's the thing about there's been opportunity after opportunity to just quit and go and do my own thing, man, and just get off course and, you know, throw in the towel because, you know, people, they'll hurt you. I just throw in this towel here. People will hurt you. People will wrong you. They'll talk about you. They'll do all of this stuff. But no, 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 no. Now, remember this right here. The enemy come to steal to kill and destroy. But Jesus said he came that you might be blessed and that you might be blessed in an abundant kind of way. So stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course when it feels good. Stay the course when it feels bad. Stay the course when they hurt your feelings. I'm, I'm talking to somebody in this room. Stay the course. Stay the course when it don't look good. Stay the course when it does look good. Stay the course. Keep your, keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. And he'll make a way where there is no way. Mm. He'll make a way where there is no way. Notice what it says. Notice what it says. 
And I, I love this little progression. I, I, in, in my mind, when I look at the Word of God, I see progressions so many times. And I love this little progression. It says, it says he spent all that he had. Y'all ever, you ever spent all you had? Man, I have. <laughs> More than once. Spent all, he, he was, he spent it all. It's just laying it out there. He said, he ain't got no more money. He spent all that he had. And then watch what happened. He began to be in want. Can I tell you something? If you spend all you have, you're going to want something. You're going to be in want. Am I right? So, so notice the progression. He spent all that he had, and then he began to be in want. And just like the enemy there, Came a famine. See that? See that progression? It's been all he had. Now I'm in want. And now there's a famine that's in the land. Famines are going to come. I wish I could tell you, you're never going to have to face a famine. Famines are going to come. But notice what it says he done. It says, and then because he had spent all that he had, he was in want and a famine had come. It says he goes out and he joins himself to a citizen of that faraway country. Somebody that wasn't his people. Somebody that didn't know the Lord. Somebody that wasn't raised the way that he was raised. He went out and he joined himself to a, to a citizen of that country. And what you just seen right there is you've seen the perfect picture of exactly what the enemy wants for your life. He wants to strip you down until you're at a place to where you have spent everything that you have. He wants to get you to a place to where you are in a place of want, where a famine comes in. But the thing he wants you to do the most is he wants you to go and join yourself to a citizen of a country you're not a part of. I want you all to hear what I'm saying. I'm not talking physical. I'm talking spiritual this morning. I'm talking spirit. Did you know that we are a nation, a holy nation, a peculiar people? We've been called out for such a time as this. Come on now. He, and what the enemy wants, he wants to pull you away from the nation that you're called to and get you to join yourself to a citizen of another country. What we have here is a type and shadow of what he's showing us, that joining and connecting ourselves to him. Did you know that every sex trafficker, this is their hope, is that you will get yourself in a physical way now, you'll get yourself to a place to where you're in want and you have spent everything that you have. And there's a famine in your life. In other words, what has happened, you have hit rock bottom. He banks on that. She banks on that. That you'll get to that place. And they pray on that. That you might come and join yourself to them. Then notice what it says it done. Anytime we join ourselves to something that God never intended for us to join ourselves to, it will do the same thing every single time. It sent him away into that foreign country and gave him a job, and the job was to go, because, he, you know, he's willing, and here was, here was the job. The job was to go and feed the pigs. Now, you understand something. As a Jew, this was the lowest of the low. Because as a Jew, you weren't supposed to touch it. You weren't supposed to touch a swine. You weren't supposed to touch a pig. You weren't supposed, even if food was cooked in the pots, you were to throw the pots away. There, you, you were not to touch, you would have... No part of it. So in other words, this was the most humiliating thing that he could possibly do to this young man. I mean, he left his father with high hopes and anticipations that, man, he was going to go and he was going to do great things. But he got careless and he went and he spent it, spent it all on riotous living, the Bible says, on crazy living, cray cray kind of living. And now he's broke. He's busted. He's disgusted. Now there's a famine. Now he's done winning and joined himself. And now that citizen of that country has sent him out to take care of his pigs for him. Doesn't get any lower. He goes out and what he's doing, he, he's feeding the hogs. And then the Bible says, and he was so hungry that he, and it got so bad that he got himself to a place to where he said, you know what? I'm, will, I, I'm so hungry. I'm willing to eat what I'm feeding the hogs here. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's done, it's done got bad. 
I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hit, I didn't hit bottom. I didn't hit bottom. You know, you know what we're afraid of? We're afraid of rock bottom. We don't, we don't want nobody to know we're in a bad place. We want everybody to know when we're in a good place. We want everybody to know when we got money. We don't want nobody to know when we don't have money. We want everybody to know when life's good, but we don't want anybody to know when life's tough. He hit rock bottom. You know what I found out? I found out not to despise the rock bottom places. Amen? Because you know what I found out? I found out, Pastor Chris, that the rock bottom places a lot of times is the mercy and the grace of God. Are y'all with me? I found out that the rock bottom places a lot of times is God moving in my life. You know what I prayed for people? I prayed, God, let them hit rock bottom. And that's tough. God, let them, let them, let them just get to that place to where there's no way to look but up. They can't get any lower. Can I tell you something? This is exactly where this young man was. He was at a place where he couldn't go any lower. He was at a place to where, it, man, it had done got so bad that I'm willing to eat the slop that's been fed to, that's given, fed to the pigs. You, you understand that? You would look in a bucket. You would look in a bucket that is going to slop that's going to be dumped over into a pig pen. And you say, I mean, I, I, I could dip my hand in there. I could eat that. And that's, I'm going to tell you something. That's rock bottom. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. It don't get no lower than that. That's, that's it. Rock bottom. But then I love what it said. You know what the rock bottom thing done for him? The rock bottom. You know, when you're in a rock bottom place, it'll make you start thinking. <laughs> you know, I found out when I, when I was in a rock bottom place, boy, all of a sudden I got a little smarter. Because I was dumb enough to get to the rock bottom place. But man, there's got to be something better than this. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, I love what the Bible says. The Bible says he came to himself. <laughs> he, he had an epiphany. You know, he, he like. Oh. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, duh. I mean, I'm not a smart man, but he, what? He, he came to himself. You, you know what? You know what brought him to, what, to the point to where, man, he, he started to think differently was the rock bottom place in his life. You know, the Lord can just let us hang out in a mediocre place in our life and we can stay in that place all the time. But praise and glory be to God for the rock bottom places in our life and that the mercy and the grace of God is there in the rock bottom places that he loves us so much. And, he, and, and all of a sudden, I love what the Bible says. The Bible says, and he came to himself and then the Bible says, he said to himself. Y'all ever talk to yourself? I'm the king of talking to myself. I talk to myself all the time. I do. I'm a preacher. <laughs> my daughter, she's terrible about watching, watching my expressions on my face. And it never fails when she's over the house, which is every day. But uh, <laughs> I see her face turning red, so I'm going to go on and work it. It never fails. She'll say to me, she'll say, Daddy, who are you talking to? <laughs> and I'll say, what? Why are you sitting there watching me? Because, you know, most of the time I, I deal with cray-cray people, people. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to say it, y'all. Most, I, I, most time I'm working through something. If it's not a sermon I'm working through, it's a situation that I'm working through. And you know what I'll do in that situation? I'll, I'll talk my way through it. I, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, well, you can do this. You can do I don't answer myself. <laughs> Help my brother out. But I will talk to myself. I was sitting at the, this is a true story, happened more than once. I was sitting at the traffic light one day, and I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm having a conversation, baby, you know, talking to myself. I mean, I'm not just like, I'm, I'm just like this right here. You, you, and I look to the side, and this girl is sitting in the car, and she's looking at me like that. Y'all know what I've done? I just reached down and picked my phone up. One. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
Because you know, you know what? You, there's something about talking to yourself, you know? And, 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 and the Bible says that all of a sudden that he began to talk to himself. Now, it's not, it's not necessary. I, I think you're, I, I'm going to say this. I think you're perfectly sane if you're talking to yourself. <laughs> but what makes the difference is what are you saying to yourself? Are y'all, are y'all with me? What are you, what do you, the Bible says that death and life is in the power of the, and I, the Bible says that as a man thinks in his, so is, and out of the abundance of the, the mouth, you got it. All my central lights got that. So my question is, what are you speaking over yourself? Because we learn a lot about this young man right here and what he's speaking over himself. Because here's what, he, here's what he says to himself. He says, wait a minute, stupid. Maybe that's not there, but if you look hard enough, it's there. He said, how many hired hands? My, my dad, wait a minute, man, my dad, he's got this farm, and he's got all this stuff, and he's got all these hired hands. But you know what he had to stop and think about? But really, none of it belongs to me. But here's what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'll go home to my dad, and I'll say to my dad. He's talking this out. He says, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to say to my dad, I am no more worthy to be called your son So, Dad, make me as one of your hired servants, and I will serve you there. And you know what? You know what? You know what to this young man? That sounded like a good plan to him. But you know what it tells me? It tells me that that's the way that he saw himself. I'm not worthy to be his son anymore. All I'm worthy to be is a hired servant. So all I can do is go home and work for him, and he treat me like one of the hired servants. Do you know what that describes? That describes 90% of the church today. Is that we feel that way. Oh, we're saved. He was a son. Oh, we're saved. We're saved. But I'm still not worthy to do anything for him. You know why? Because he saw himself in a different light. He saw himself in the light of all that had taken place in his life. But can I tell you something? Once you are a son, and once you are a daughter, you can never not be. That didn't register with a lot of y'all. Once you are a son and once you are a daughter, you can never not be. Listen, my son put me through it. But it doesn't matter how many times I said he ain't my son or how many times he said I'm not your son. At the end of the day, his DNA flows through my veins and my DNA flows through his veins And there is no separating the two. You ought to get excited right there because that's going to help somebody. Once you're a son, you can't not be a son. Once you're a daughter, you can't not be a daughter. No matter how many pig pens you're wallowing around in, no matter how much drugs you have done, no matter how much booze you have taken, no matter how many pills you have taken, no matter how many sexual partners you have had, once you are a son, you cannot be a son. Once you are a daughter, you cannot be a daughter. Y'all with me now. But it's all in the perception It's all in the perception of what he's speaking over himself. And many times because when we get out of alignment with the Father, when we're out of alignment with the Father, then all of a sudden we begin to see ourselves 
as unworthy. There's an unworthiness that comes on us, and the son felt it. He felt it because he'd gotten out of, he, he's supposed to be in alignment, but he was out of alignment. And because he was out of alignment, he felt the unworthiness of it. And in reality, can I say this? In reality, we are all unworthy. The only thing that makes us worthy is being in alignment with him. Are y'all with me? The only thing that makes me worthy is the fact that my Lord and my Savior went and shed his precious blood on Calvary's cross and had washed me clean of all my sins and put me in alignment with him to receive the blessing of God. So the trick of the enemy is how you talk to yourself. When you go through the difficult times. Because you know what we all want? I want mm, listen to me very carefully. I want every dad to listen to me. I want every son to listen to every daughter. Y'all listen to me. All of you. Oh, y'all. Dads, listen to me seriously. Be careful how you talk to your children. Because... I was telling Donna this morning, I said, you know, what, you know what I get from this story? Is that every son, every daughter, there is, there is something about the daddy's blessing. There's, there's, there's something, something about it. And Donna, she spoke up. She said, you know what, you're right. She said, because what mamas do, when mamas speak over kids, they want to try to make it right. She said, but you know, our kids even, they'll listen to what I say, take it to heart. She said, but then they'll say, wonder what daddy will say. She said, because they want to hear what daddy's got to say. And listen, if, if I'm always low rating them and cutting them down and tearing them up, we don't see anywhere. The, the Bible says clearly that the son says to himself, I'm going to go home. And I'm going to tell my dad, I'm not worthy to be your son. So make me as one of your hired servants. That's what I'll do. So, so he's walking this long road. Okay, dad, I'm not worthy to be your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Long way. Okay, dad, I'm not worthy. Okay, here's where it's going to go. This be me. This be me. Okay, here's where it's going to go. I know what he's going to say, but I'm going to say, I'm not worthy to be your son. So if you can make me one of your hired servants, and at least he can let me, at least I ain't got to eat from the pig pen. I mean, I, I know, I know he cares enough. Now, I know he's probably ticked off at me, and the last time I saw him, I told him I didn't want to see him again. But, and, and do you know what the son has done? Watch. Here's the way the son shows up in his own eyes. In his own eyes. In his own eyes, the son's coming down the road. And he's... This ain't going to work. <laughs> Help me out. No, don't nobody move. When I get home, I'm going to tell him... I know I'm not worthy to be your son. And the reason I'm not worthy to be your son is because I got all this baggage. Man, I got, I got this hurt. I got this rejection. I got all of this stuff that I've done. Poverty. And the places I've been, man, I've been to the pig pen. And I got all of that. And I'm carrying all that with me. And then you know it. You, you see it? Do you see it? You see, what a, you see what a dad does? See it? And the Bible says he sees him. From a long way off. In other words, there he is. And you know what we don't see? We don't see where the son, where the dad runs up to him and says, Oh no, don't come crawling back now. You should have thought about that before you left this house. And let me just go on and tell you, I ain't got nothing else for you. We don't see it. We don't see where he, he low rates him. We don't see where he does it. But the son, the son, what he looks in his own eyes, I got all this baggage. But the dad, 
he runs out there and he falls on his neck and he kisses him. And, the, and you've seen it. The whole time he's kissing him, the son says, I done practiced this, so let me say it. He says, Dad, I, 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 I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. Maybe one of your hired servants. And you know what his dad does? His dad starts to undress him. He starts to take the baggage off of him. And he says something like this. Somebody bring me a robe. Somebody bring me some shoes. Somebody bring my family ring. Put it on his finger. Put it on his feet. Put my robe around him. And what his dad ain't, what his dad is doing, his dad is putting to bed all of this. Because his son who was dead is now alive. Who was lost is now found. Praise God. We serve a God. Now I went out the door this morning done something I don't do. I left my wedding ring at home. I sat halfway over here. I said, dog, I left my ring at home. And we was about to turn on City Pond Road. And I thought Donald was going to say, oh, well. She said, turn around. <laughs> I said, are you serious? She said, no, I'm good. <laughs> if you didn't think enough about it, don't worry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say that. She didn't say that. But he takes and puts a ring. You know what that was? That was a family ring. Had the family yeah. insignia on it. The family mark. And, and he gave it to him when he was just a little boy. And he'd stretch it as he grew older. He, and, and undoubtedly, he had took the ring off. Another sign. I ain't your son no more. And he said, bring the ring. Let's put it on his finger. You know what it was? It was a covenant. It was a covenant. You know what your wedding band is? A covenant that you made with your wife and with God. And we don't always keep that covenant, that covenant, do we? Lord, I'm going to love this woman, be faithful to this woman. I'm going to protect this woman, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. It's a covenant. You know, a covenant is one of the strongest bonds that you can make with someone. And do you know what Jesus made with us? He made a blood covenant with us. And all this story is showing us is the covenant that God makes with us. That is stronger than the enemy. That is stronger than what you've done. That is stronger than where you've been. That's stronger than all of the other stuff that's happened in your life. Because you, you know what, you know what that, that robe he put on him, you know what it signified? Royalty. You ain't no servant. You royalty. You my son. And the whole time he said, Dad, he said, listen, I'm not worthy. Be your son. Uh, Maybe me one of your higher sons. Somebody bring the rope. Put it on him. Dad, you listening? I ain't worthy to be your son. Somebody bring the sand. Y'all know what the shoes? You know what the shoes? The shoes represented, the shoes represented authority. And the shoes represented that he wasn't a slave. He, he was his son. Put, put that boy on some good shoes. And get his rope. Now slide that ring on his finger because the ring represents authority. He's got power. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what the blood covenant with Jesus Christ gives us in our life? It gives us authority. Listen, it makes us royalty. Praise God. Listen, you, you know what it does? It makes us a son. Well, I'm not beat down anymore. I'm not messed up anymore. I'm a brand new child of the king, and he's done a great work in my life. All things pass away. All things become new. That's who I am, praise God. See, he'll do it for you. Come on, Jimmy, help me. I don't know who I'm talking to in here this morning, but if you'll let God, God will be God. And he'll do something great in your life. Y'all remember a few weeks ago when I started this series? I was talking about Joshua. You remember that? You remember, you remember what I said about Joshua? 
Remember I said that Joshua had been giving, he had been giving the, the, the formula, the keys to how to have the blessing. Remember what God said to him, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you get these people up and you go into this promised land. Moses brought them all as far as he could bring them. They stood and they watched Moses as Moses went, ascended up into the mountains. It was not an uncommon thing that he would go up into the mountain and meet with God. They stood and they watched. And they waited and they waited and they waited and they waited. Maybe days went by. Finally, the word of the Lord came to Joshua. He says, Joshua, Moses is dead. He, I've already, we already had his ceremony. Now you get these people up. You cross over this Jordan into the land that I promised you a generation ago. And you're going to be very, you're going to have good success. Anybody want good success? He says, all you got to do if you want to have good success, he said, don't let this word, the word of the Lord, don't let it not be in your mouth. Don't let it depart from your mouth. Keep it there. In the good times, the bad times hard times and easy times because so many times what we'll do is we'll let the word of God in the bad times leave our mouth and we'll get our word in our mouth and we start talking all kind of negative all kind of doubt all kind of gloom he says don't let that word depart out of your mouth get it in there then he says second thing he said meditate on it day and night get the word down in you people but when the tough times come, you know, you got the word. You got the word. And I, I ain't talking about, you know, we got, I got the word. I, I hear people say it all my life. I got the word. Well, that's good. Keep it under your arm. Keep it in your truck. Keep it laying on the coffee table or up on the mantel, wherever you keep it. Bookshelf, wherever you keep it. That's good. But get it in your mouth. Because it can't come out of your mouth if it's not in your mouth. And the only way it can get in your mouth is if you meditate on it. Day and night. 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 Keep it there. And then he says, third thing. Remember? You remember? I'm going to close with this. Remember? He said, and remember to do. It's simple. Do what it says to do. Do it. And you know what? The strangest thing to me is, he says, and you. God don't say, and I, he says, and you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. How do I make my way prosperous? I get the word in my mouth. I get it in my heart. I get it in my spirit to the point where it transforms my mind. And I do what it says to do to the best of my ability. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And when I make a mistake, I repent. I get back on track. I get the word in my mouth. I meditate on it day and night. And I try to do what it says to do. And I get up tomorrow and I'm going to do what it says to do. Or I messed up yesterday, but today I'm going to do what it says to do. And because of that, I'm going to make my way prosperous and have good success. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to in here that's the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. You say, Pastor Daryl, I've always viewed myself as just, you know, God can't do that in my life. Don and I have been married. We're going on 39 years. I know, we don't look near that old. And um, 39 years. Been in church. I don't know, what, about 30, 37 years and can I tell you something about God that I have learned that he loves me <laughs> he loves me he loves me when it's good and he loves me when it's bad can I rephrase that he loves me when I'm good he loves me when I'm bad when I totally mess it up and when I get it right And listen to me very carefully. There's not a single person in this room that he's looking at you right now saying, not you. 
37 years knowing the Lord and about three years into that we heard God's call to ministry or I did it took her a little longer because we were both so shy had a guy just this past week he said man I remember I remember man y'all was so shy he said Donna would be in the room wouldn't say a word we wouldn't even know she was there I said yeah that's Donna and he said but look what God done who'd ever thought and I said, I know it. She won't shut up now, will she? <laughs> but you've heard her testimony. You've heard our testimony. And our testimony was where we came from and what we came up out of. We just thought that the blessing was just knowing the Lord. The fact that he knew us. He loved us. But we didn't feel like he could ever use us. Not after what we've done. Not after where we've been. Not after where we come from. But I came to tell somebody in this room right now that what the enemy always comes to do, steal, kill, and destroy. And he always wants to make you think you can never be good enough. And that the best thing you can do is go home and say to the Father, I'm not worthy to be your son I'm not worthy to be your daughter but if you'll just make me just make me one of your hired servants I'll serve you there I remember man and my family couldn't believe it none of y'all and and they all sitting right here my family couldn't believe it and I remember I remember when I got saved because I got saved and I got healed and I got filled and I got set free. And I remember when the attitude changed from I can't do that to I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Oh, there's a mind renewal that begins to take place where I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was dead, but now I'm alive. I once couldn't do a thing, but now I can do it all through my Christ, through the one who saved me and loved me. I don't know what I'm talking to in here, but let God be God. And I declare that everything that you have spoke over yourself or that someone else has spoke over you, that right now in the name of Jesus, that thing is canceled. That thing is canceled over your life. And, I, and I'm deploring you to, to begin to speak life over yourself. Begin to speak that I can do this. I can do this. Because you don't know. I had no idea that God had called me to be a pastor. I had no idea that one day I'd be standing on City Pond Road in Central Community Church preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and that people would actually come. <laughs> but they did. So I don't know who you are right now. But let God do a work in you that only God can do. Amen, everybody. Come on, y'all stand up all over the house. All over the house. Would you go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes for just a second with me? Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, you know every man, woman, and child that's in this room, every young person that's in this room right now. Lord, you know more about them than they know about themselves. But, Lord, I, I, I'm so thankful today that regardless of how they got here, they got here and Lord they may be at that place to where they've spent all and they don't know where to turn Lord I thank you for that place right now Lord in the name of Jesus I begin to speak life over this room I begin to speak life over these people I begin to speak life over everything that touches their life and today God I begin to declare your goodness over them I de declare that over the daughters Lord that there's a worthiness that is there. Lord, I, I declare over that, that, that young lady or that, or that middle-aged or that older woman, God, that the enemy is convinced that they can never, ever, ever, never, ever receive what you have for them. And even seen them there in that place. God, I begin to speak life over her and over that man, young, middle-aged, older man. God, that the enemy is convinced you're too old for that. You're too young for that. Or look what you've done. You can, today, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over them. And I speak a healing over them. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you're in this room right now and you say to me, Pastor Darrell, that's me, brother. I need it. 
and I'm ready to receive what God has for me. Would you, would you just slip your hand up and let me see where, where you're at in this room? All over this room. Praise God. All over this room. Come on, all over this room. All over this room. Praise God. Praise God. All right, you can put your hands down. You can put your hands down. Can we take it one more step? Y'all knew I was going to do that, right? I don't always do that. Can we, can we take it one more step? As, as soon as Pastor Matt begins to sing, would you begin to drop all your baggage? And would you just step out in the aisle? And would you just come home to the Father? And would you just come right here and, and let us pray with you and let us believe God to do something great in your life? Come on, you just drop the baggage and just leave it where it is and just begin to speak life over yourself. Father, have your way. And we give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who will come? 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 Come on, come stand right here. Who come? Come on, come on, come on. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. God for our prayer prayer warriors that are here if you're on this prayer team that's that's who's gonna be laying hands on you I just want to give you that security we don't just let anybody lay hands on you if you have been trained and on our prayer team get ready somebody's about to lay their hand on your back come on prayer team but go ahead and begin to do that begin to do that and we're gonna to begin to speak life over them let's go ahead and start speaking life over them go ahead go ahead just begin to declare something. Don't massage them. Just, just, just lay your hand on them and begin to pray over them. Just begin to pray over them. Spirit of the living God, you know every single one of these people. You know every circumstance that's going on in their life. You know the prodigal journey that they've been on. But Lord, look at where they are right now. They're standing right here. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you that they hear the voice of the Father, the love of the Father that's calling them to a place, a place of goodness in their life, a place of wholeness and a place of healing in their life. Now, Lord, we begin to speak over them. And we begin to speak the goodness of God over them. We begin to speak healing over every circumstance that touches their life. We, do, we begin to speak life over them in every way, in every sense of the word. And God, we thank you for it and we praise you for it. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you. King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, joy of our salvation. Come here, Brother Phil. Come here, Brother Phil. Pray for this couple right here. Pray for the couple. Come on, let's just let the... Let the altar workers work. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Yeah, come on. Sing that. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Yes, let your spirit rain down over her. Yes, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your spirit rain down over this man. Touch his life. I speak healing over him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. I declare no weapon formed against him shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing over this man from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your healing that's taking place in this man. Yeah, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Spirit of the living God, go down over this woman. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, flow down over this man. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Spirit of the living God, do what only you can do. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Do what only you can do. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank that have been spoke against her life, been spoke against what you're doing in her life, and I cancel that thing out. Lord, I cancel it out right now, and in the name of Jesus, I begin to speak life over her, and I speak that greater is he that's in her than he that's in this world, and that she is more than a conqueror through you, and I begin to declare your goodness over her life. We give you praise for it. We thank you for it. In the mighty name, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Now come Holy Ghost, come Holy Spirit. Move in a mighty way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, come, well, come on then. Hallelujah. That's your next level right there. Amen. Come on, worship her. Worship her. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill this woman from head to foot with your presence. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. God is good. You know, God's got his hand all over you, right? Listen, God's got a purpose and God's got a plan. And listen, I come against rejection. I come against heartache. I come against every negative thing that's been said against you. Every, every negative thing that's been focused on you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I cancel that thing out and stop speaking. I'm just going to be a servant. I'm just going to be a servant and start to speak. I'm a daughter of the King, praise God. And He's going to do great things with you. I believe that. You believe that? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this young lady. Thank you for the work that you have for her, God. Show her the worth that you have, Lord, over her life. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, every great thing that you desire to do in her life, Lord, Lord, let it come to pass. Now, Lord, anoint her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet and stir up the gifts of God on the inside of her and put your word so deep down inside of her, Lord, that it's going to be like a well spring of life, like rivers of living water that's going to come up and out of her belly, Lord, and you're going to use her in a mighty, mighty way. We thank you for it and we praise you for it in the mighty and powerful name that's above every name. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Come on, man, sing that, sing that, sing it. Yeah. Fire and wind. That's right. Fire and wind. 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 Yeah. 
stand right there on her belly. Out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy spoke against you is canceled out in this moment. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. You are more than a conqueror through him in the name of Jesus. and getting what God has for you. But the, the unfortunate thing is so many of us will pick it all back up and say, I'm taking this with me. No, 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 no. Not after this moment. Not after this moment. Let God do what only God can do. Am I right? Am I right? Amen. Amen. shirt dude I don't know I don't usually do this you ask him but I believe God's got a he's got a call on your life a plan on your life every one of you guys God's got a you come here for something and you got it now use it use it let him use your voice let him use your influence let him use your hand let him use your heart your mind every bit of it let him use it let him use it and he'll completely wear you out. Amen? And you'll be so thankful for it. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. I want to ask you one more time to bow your heads. And we're going to get ready to go here in just a second. I'm going to get Pastor Armand to come up and close us in a word of prayer. Um, but can we do this just real quick? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And I know this, you may not be from here. And you might think, what is going on? What kind of church do you say this was? Well, listen, we just, uh, we love the Lord. And we love it when God shows up. And I'm going to tell you, the last five or six services, he showed up in a mighty way. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, um, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you're one of those that says to me in here, and I just want to check the room, if you're one of those that says to me in here, Pastor Darrell, my problem is I don't know the Lord. I don't know him as my Lord and Savior. But listen, I'm not going to call you out. But if that's you, if you'll just slip your hand up, I'm going to pray with the whole group right where they are. Just slip your hand up real high. I see, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. Hold it up real high. Hold it up real high. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hold it up. Hold it. I see your hand. Yes. Uh-huh. I see it. Okay. For both of you, or maybe there's others. There's you. I see your hand over. Yes, ma'am. Pray this with me, would you? Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this service today. And I thank you, Lord, that you worked it all out so I could be here. And right now, in Jesus' name, I ask you, come into my heart. I need your forgiveness, Lord. 
Now, Lord, what I do right now is I forgive anybody that's wronged me in any way. And, Lord, I let them off the hook. And in return, God, I ask you to forgive me for all the things that I've done wrong. I ask you to come into my heart and I ask you to save me. I believe that you died for me. And I believe that on the third day you arose. And I accept that death, that burial, that resurrection. Wash me in your blood. And after this moment right here, I'll never be the same again. I give you praise. I give you glory. And I give you honor. In Jesus' name. Amen.